Hello everyone, my name is Anika Naram Reddy and I am a 12th grader in Oak Ridge International School here in Hyderabad. I am very passionate about integrating technology into politics and sustainability. Today's talk is about sustainability. Let's take a moment here to think about what comes to mind when I say waste. Paper, plastic, wet waste, right? But let me introduce to you the next big thing in waste. Textile waste. Think about how many times you've gone to the store and bought a piece of clothing just because it was on sale. And how many times you've worn that piece of clothing. Probably not a lot of times, right? After all, the norm these days is to wear a piece of clothing only seven times before we throw it away. I know most of us don't think much before we buy clothes. But when your t-shirt requires 2,700 litres of water to produce and a pair of jeans 7,600 litres of water, I think it's about time we start thinking about it. The truth is, I am no different from the rest of you either. For my 15th birthday, I went to a tailor to get a dress stitched. And I noticed something that has always been present but had never caught my attention piles of textile trimmings on the floor. So I decided to go ahead and ask the tailor, what do you do with all of this waste? To which I got a very casual, we throw it away. Realizing for the first time the impact that textile waste from our tailors has on the environment, I decided to dig a little deeper. Here are the two basic facts I learned that I think will set the background for the rest of this talk. 1. Textile waste is the third largest source of municipal solid waste in India. And 2. A UN report from 2018 has shown us that 10% of our greenhouse gas emissions are caused by clothing and footwear production. Until that point, textile waste, waste management weren't words in my dictionary. But here is what it is. Ask your parents or your grandparents they'll tell you that buying clothing was an occasional event, something that happened a few times in a year, before school started, during a festival, or when they outgrew what they had. But 20 years ago, something changed. Clothing became cheaper, trends sped up, and shopping became a hobby. In fact, a BBC report has shown us that we buy 60% more clothing now than we did 15 years ago. This is fast fashion. To keep up with our shopping, um, clothing production has also had to speed up. And in India, where 80% of our garment industry is tailors, a significant portion of our textile waste is coming from tailors which we are yet to address. Now we've seen the problem and I see two solutions from my research. The first one is we must be responsible. The three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, have now become five R's with the addition of refuse and repurpose. Firstly, refuse. Rethink before you buy a piece of clothing. If you don't think you need it, refuse to buy it. Secondly, reduce. Reduce the amount of textile waste you produce. You can do this using the next three R's. The third one, reuse. Reuse your clothing as much as possible. Pass it on to the future generations. The fourth one, recycle. Recycle clothing whenever possible. And finally, repurpose. Upcycle your clothing in whichever way possible. There are thousands of resources available online that show you how to do this. In fact, a study has shown us that extending the life of a garment by only 9 months can reduce carbon emissions, waste and water footprints by 20-30% to 30 each. The second solution that I see is structural recycling, which is moving towards a circular economy model. Let me introduce you to circular economy. As humans, we generally take the linear approach, which is we take, we make, and then we dispose. However, this creates toxic waste as byproducts 
and uses up our finite resources, which is not sustainable in the long term. So what is? This is where the circular economy model comes in. The central idea of the circular economy model is that we convert the goods of today into the resources of tomorrow. With the circular economy model, we take, we make, and then we repurpose or recycle. This is sustainable because we don't create toxic waste and we don't use up our finite resources. So what is happening in India? Worn clothing from across the world is sent to Panipat in India, where about 100 textile recycling units convert the worn clothing into yarn. This yarn is then converted into shoddy fabric. Shoddy fabric is largely used as blankets, um, either selling them to the poor for a low cost, selling them in African markets, or using them for disaster relief. This is the perfect example of a circular economy model. We take, we make, and then we recycle. Now the ironic thing about Panipat is that we recycle clothing from across the world, but we don't recycle our own clothing. I've spoken to multiple waste management enterprises across Hyderabad, and I found that none of them are willing to accept textile waste. When asked why, they say that it's because it doesn't economically make sense for them because the textile waste from Hyderabad needs to be sent to textile recycling units in northern India and the transportation cost is so huge that they can't even break even. So what do we do with all of our textile waste? So with all of my learnings, I started FARS. FARS is an initiative to upcycle pre-consumer textile waste from tailors into masks and bags. Through FARS, we have upcycled 2,875 meters of textile waste and prevented them from going to landfills. With this textile waste, we have sewn 11,000 masks and 250 bags, donating half of them to NGOs that support women. Even better, we have supported nine tailors with daily wages throughout the pandemic. And in addition to the nine tailors, We've conducted awareness campaigns for over 100 tailors, teaching them how to use our designs and their waste to create masks and bags that they can sell to their customers. Now you've seen the problem and you've seen the solutions. Let me give you an idea of what it will look like if we don't take action. In case you haven't seen it already, the UN recently released the IPCC report which is a 3,000 page report compiled by 234 scientists. And this is what it says. Our planet has been hotter in the past 10 years than it has been in the past 1 lakh years. And our CO2 emissions have risen to levels that have not been seen in the past 2 million years. We have to stop emitting greenhouse gases. Look around you, look at all of the disasters. The heat dome in Canada, the deluge in China and Indonesia, the floods in Europe, and the wildfires in California and Greece. This is only going to get worse. There's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. So please do your bit to save the planet. Buy less and use more. Thank you for allowing me to share my ideas. And what can you do? Buy less, wear clothes as much as possible and upcycle wherever you can. Thank you.